Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Bible with Bordeaux Q and A video uh, slash podcast. So it's been a while since I've done one of these. I just wrapped up the James study for uh, for the Book of James in Scripture, and that is on the Solomon Sports Podcast YouTube channel in the Bible with Bordeaux playlist. So you can go check that out. I'm getting ready to start the Gospel of John study. So I'm hoping I'll be able to start that off this week, and uh, forgive the little bit of a uh, little bit of funky hair there. I do apologize; I didn't get on my hair purdy before I did this. But um, I wanted to read the question that was sent to me personally. Well, actually, it was on Facebook, and I was tagged in it. So I'm going to be reading the question, and then I'm going to address it. And we are essentially talking about the rich young ruler that are in the Synoptic Gospel. So. Uh, it says here, in my opinion, one of the most powerful and misunderstood stories in the Bible, which is Luke 18, 18 through 30. So much is said in those 12 verses, especially verses 18 and 19. Those two verses break every thought I used to have about being a Christian, how just being good is enough to get into heaven, how being a good person and following the Ten Commandments is enough and throw some church in for good measure. When Jesus says, why do you call me good? Only God is truly good. And I finally began to understand what is meant by that statement. My world started to shatter. Here is Christ, the person all Christians should try to emulate. And he is saying that he is not good. Then the part about selling your possessions and following Jesus. How many are willing to literally sell all the worldly goods and follow Jesus? Now, personally, I think this was said to illustrate a point that the rich man was putting money before God. But it's a good question to ask yourself now. Or I thought be or I could be reading into this way further than I need to. Jason Bordeaux, I trust your opinion. Thoughts. So this is a good uh it, it's a good story in scripture. It's actually in uh the Synoptic Gospels. That meaning it's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's on all three of those. And so uh I'm gonna read the actual scripture. Uh, of the rich young man and i'm just going to read it from the uh i'm gonna read it from the matthew version because that's the one that i had my study on but essentially luke mark and matthew all share this same story so uh here in matthew 19 start with verse 16 it says and behold a man came up to him saying teacher what good deed must i do to have eternal life and he said to him why do you ask me what is good there is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. He said, uh, which ones? Uh, which, he said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, I have kept all these. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you would be perfect, go sell all what you possess possess and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me when the young man heard this he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions and so that's kind of the the wrapping up of that particular story and uh it's also in luke 18 18 and mark 10 17 is where they start in those uh, particular gospel accounts so we're going to talk about it and I uh, kind of give my thoughts and my best study that I have done on this topic. So, uh, so there's a rich young man who comes to Jesus and asks him, what good deeds must he do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus asked the man, why did he ask what is good? Then follows a question by saying, there is only one who is good. That one who is good is God, which is Jesus. We can guess that the man is a Jew because he calls himself, he calls Jesus teacher. And with this, he would have known the Ten Commandments. So the man must have known that keeping the commandments was not the only thing that he must do or else he wouldn't have asked because he already kept all those commandments that he had said. And uh, so he was probably inquiring, well, what else is there? Because I know this isn't just it. So uh, this may have just been clarification as to whether or not Jesus wanted the Jews to keep the laws and traditions that were taught by the religious leaders of that time. Jesus lists five of the Ten Commandments that have to do with us loving one another. These five commandments are simple and easy to do. 
essentially don't false bear witness, don't covet, you know, all those things. And uh, I would also point out that Jesus did not list these in order of how they were given. He listed the do not commands and then the command about honoring your father and your mother, followed by a new commandment, which summarizes all those commandments that are meant for one another, which is love your neighbor as yourself. So the man knew how to do these. And he had been doing them. He'd probably been doing them since he was a young boy. He probably knew the law in pretty good detail. He knew all these things. He knew the Ten Commandments. It wasn't anything new to him. So then he asked Jesus what else he must do. And it's interesting that the man asked for more requirements. It's not really a natural thing for us to do. We usually want to do the bare minimum. So I, I almost kind of give the man a little bit of kudos for like, hey, he's looking to do more because he realizes what he's doing must not be enough. So Jesus then digs into the toughest area of this man's life, and he tells him to go sell all his riches and give to the poor. This shows that the man had not actually kept the second commandment, which says you must not take, you must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image or anything in the heavens or the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. Now I will say this, that, scripture is not the man had made money an idol but not necessarily the type of idol that god was talking about in the second commandment the second commandment really is talking about creating things and and asking for gods to come and do and dwell them because back then that was a thing that they did and not to go off on a tangent but i'm not saying that's what the second commandment fully means but this man did make an idol out of money. So I feel like it still fits. It still shows him not fully committing to the Ten Commandments. So uh, I do think that this shows us that a dollar tree can include anything uh, that we don't want to give up for the sake of the kingdom. And for this man, it was money, treasures, possessions. Now, perhaps this is showing that no matter what, uh, no one by their own good can earn eternal life with God. Uh, that even if we are in the right standing with one another, we must also be in right standing with God. So even if we keep all of the people to people commandments, we still will fail in the people to God commandment. We're going to fail one way or another. Like we're just going to. Jesus is the only way to maintain true righteousness in God's sight. So one big question might be, uh, is Matthew nineteen seventeen in contradiction to John three sixteen? Uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus here is talking to a person who was trying to earn his way into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, he's talking about spiritual things and explains to him how to receive spiritual things. Uh, and this with childlike faith. So also, uh, just a couple more things to add. So Jesus did not deny his, uh, his, his divinity. So I think one of the uh, confusing portions is, uh, and I'll bring it back up for you to see, is the fact that the guy says, uh, teacher, uh, and actually I'll, I'll go to the Luke version of it just so we can stay in context with one another based on the actual question. Uh, he says, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. This is not Jesus saying, I am not God. He's almost letting him know he said hey you called me good the only thing that is good the only person who is truly good is god i'm good good is god i'm god it's it's he he combined them in a sense so this isn't jesus saying that i'm not good and it's not him saying i'm not god so uh, I just wanted to make that clear. I think that that can be misconstrued sometimes with some people. And, uh, and as you know, Jesus talks in a weird way sometimes. So it's understandable that that could be confusing. Jesus says a lot of confusing things. So don't feel bad if you're confused after reading what Jesus says. Because Jesus does often also answer questions with questions. And, uh, and so that's another thing we have to remember too. But he is telling him essentially that, that he is God and he is, he is God and that's shown by the man knowing that he is good. So uh, he is stating that if, uh, that if man truly knew Jesus was good, it's only because Jesus is God. So the concern is to follow Jesus. Like that is our calling is to follow Jesus, follow the one who is good because 
the law is not necessarily something that makes us good. It shows that we're not good. And so we should follow Jesus, the one who is good. And when we receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is working in our lives through the process of sanctification, making us holy. And so we look more and more like Jesus as we walk out our faith. So the breakdown is only the good can keep all the law. Really, only God is good. Therefore, no one can inherit the kingdom by obeying the law, but must be a child of God in order to inherit it. So last point to be made is the rich young ruler, and I'll go back here for you. He says here in... 18, he says, and the ruler asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? That's the question he asked him. Inheritance is something that happens after a death occurs. An inheritance isn't earned. It's a gift given upon someone who passes away. So, and it's given to an heir. It's given to a child Usually, I mean, you can leave an inheritance to anybody, but the concept in that time was, especially in this time, an inheritance was given to your children to keep the family kind of fed and and wealthy in its own way. And so in order to inherit the kingdom of God, you have to be a child of God. You have to be adopted into the family of God. And so nothing you can do can get you adopted. You can't earn adoption. Adoption is something that God does. And once we come into the family, then we have inherited in, inherited eternal life. So, uh, so I hope that is somewhat helpful and not completely uh, murky or muddy. Uh, if I didn't clarify that good enough, uh, just let me know in the comments and I will try to give more clarity and, uh, and I hope that's helpful. I hope that's helpful. Let me go back to the question real quick, just to make sure I answered the actual question. Uh, well, it wasn't really a true question, but it was, um, it was about uh, following selling possessions. And, and I do, and I will agree with the, uh, the, the author of the question here, the, the, the paragraph that was, that was put on Facebook, is that, yes, I do feel like Jesus pointed out the money c- component specifically for, this, uh, for, for the rich young ruler. It wasn't necessarily a call for everybody to go and sell all your possessions in order to follow Jesus. So when Jesus gives particular people certain things or certain commands, it's not necessarily a overall commandment for every follower of Christ. So I, I do I do agree in that that does mean this. Uh, the only thing that I would say is uh, kind of uh, the pushback against what you say or what you thought Jesus might have been saying is whenever you said, here is Christ, the person all Christians should try to emulate, saying that he is not good. Um, You know, if you go back and read, Jesus never says he's not good. He just says, why do you call me good? The only person that's good is God. And because Jesus is God, Jesus is good. So uh, I hope that's clear. I hope that's helpful. Uh, Again, if you have any questions that you would like me to try to address or tackle any issues, whether it's clarity on scripture or something that may not even be uh, real scriptural, but uh, what a Christian worldview should be, just let me know in these comments. You can message me on Facebook, on Twitter at Jason Bordo one Instagram at Jason Bordo one and and I'll try to address those and post a video uh, to kind of help give some clarity in those areas, wherever they may be. Uh, also remember, uh, I'm going to be starting the study of the gospel of John this week. I'm going to be posting the first video, hopefully by Friday, um, which would be the 5th, uh, November 5th by the day I'm recording this. So go check that out. I hope you enjoy it. I hope this has been helpful. And until next time, always remember Jesus loves you way more than I ever possibly could, but I do give it a shot. See ya.